What's up guys welcome back to yet another video. It's been few days I have been using Nothing Phone 1 running latest build of Nothing OS which is 1.1.4 and in this video we'll be doing in-depth review in which I'll tell you what all bugs I have faced and other things like gaming performance, battery backup and even camera performance. So without wasting any more time let's get started. So here you can see I have my Nothing Phone 1. I've already used this device for few days and there are few issues which I have found out on this particular build. Here you can see a device is running the latest build of Nothing OS which is 1.1.4. I can still say nothing OS is still not optimized that well. There are issues like touch issues, app crashing and few other stuff. So if you guys are facing any kind of issues guys, there's a telegram group of nothing in the description below. You guys can join there and let us know what all issues you have been facing. But before talking about the bugs, let's keep a like target of 500 likes on this video. We still have 82% of users who haven't subscribed to our channel. So if you guys find our videos helpful to you, do consider subscribing and also press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So you guys must be thinking now why I have enabled display refresh rate option. So here the first issue what I have noticed on this device after updating to nothing OS 1.1.4 and that's related to refresh rate. And if you guys are not aware we do have the support of dynamic refresh rate. So in that case if your device is not being used the FPS automatically drops. So here if you see it says dynamic refresh rate switching technology enables the display refresh rate to dynamically switch to lower refresh rate to preserve the battery. So this feature is there but I have seen a lot of issues when it comes to dynamic refresh rate. So right now you can see I'm not touching the device and the FPS is still on 120 or you can say the refresh rate. But that doesn't happen with other phones I did check out on my OnePlus 9. Here you can see if I'm not touching the phone the FPS remains at 60 and soon I touch the screen the FPS goes to 120. So this is how dynamic refresh rate works but that's not the case on nothing phone one. I did test out a lot of stuff. Initially this used to fluctuate like it will switch to 60 FPS, 90 FPS and then 120. In some cases it do goes to 90 FPS but I have seen continuously fluctuation of FPS. Right now you can see we haven't touched the device and it's still at 120 FPS. Let me show you an example on Chrome. So let's check out here let me open up our website and here also if you see in chrome the fps is static once it switched to 60 and again back to 120 so here i think os is struggling to decide whether to stick on 120 or 90 fps in the ideal situations so let's open up our website now and if i open up any article and we'll wait for it to switch to 60 and let's see so here you can see now it instantly switched to 60 fps but if you talk about the home screen, here it do struggles. As you can see, it's still on 120. Sometimes it will switch to 60 and sometimes it will just switch to 60 for a millisecond and back to 120. On always on display, it do switches to 60 FPS, but sometimes it takes a lot of time. And sometimes soon the screen brightness reduces, it moves to 60 FPS. So there are bit of issues when it comes to dynamic refresh rate on nothing OS or you can say nothing phone one. The behavior of dynamic refresh rate is quite weird on nothing phone one. I haven't seen such issues on other smartphones whichever I have used. So here you can see the fluctuations guys. It goes to 60 and again come back to 120. I hope in upcoming updates nothing do improve this dynamic refresh rate feature on nothing phone. Because this will obviously drain more battery if your refresh rate stays at 120. And few users have also reported that color profile do get changed when they unlock their device. But for me this never happened. I did test out both these profiles alive and standard. But for me it never changed after locking the device. So might be a minor issue. But if you guys have faced do let us know in the comment section below. Another issue which I faced on this device are related to accidental touch. And that did happen when I was watching videos on OTT platforms and I've also seen that issue while scrolling YouTube. And on previous build, YouTube app used to freeze while using it in PIP mode. But for me personally, that did not happen after this update, but few users are still reporting the same issue. I'll be attaching the screenshots towards the left side or the right side on the screen. You guys can take a look at them. And another issue which I faced was related to always on display. So here towards the left hand side there's a video which is being played that I was able to shoot because screen recording wasn't happening and here when I used to unlock the device using power key 
Sometimes device do takes bit extra time to unlock. Soon I press the power key, the screen do turns up, but not with an actual brightness. So this is one issue which I have faced, and I think it might be an issue with the proximity sensor, wherein it's taking bit extra time to decide and work according to the ambient lighting condition. And the last issue which I have noticed while using nothing phone one as my daily driver and that's related to the animation when we lock or unlock the device. So if you guys are aware then you must know that there is an animation while unlocking and locking the device that pops up from the power key. So let me show you that. So soon I press the power key you can see that animation and the light glows from the left side and it goes towards the right side. And the same thing happen when we lock the device, the light comes from the left side and goes towards the power button. But here, my device was kept idle and you can see in that video, there is a light ray from the power button. And that's the animation glitch which happened only once it was fixed after unlocking the device. And you guys must be seeing that ray is in green color, that's because of the wallpaper. So depending on the wallpaper, we see the animation in the similar color. So this was one issue which I faced. So guys, these are some of the issues which I have faced while using Nothing Phone 1 as my primary phone. You guys let us know which all bugs you have been facing. Now talking about the battery backup, so here, if you have seen the change logs of nothing OS 1.1.4, they did mention that they have improved the battery life and, and also worked on the heating issues. And guys, another bug which I forgot to mention, that's related to this notification panel. So it only happened once and there was only fix that was to restart the device. So here you can see notification panel is overlapping the quick setting panel. I tried multiple times scrolling down, but that did not happen. So I had to restart the device. So this was another issue. And now let's continue with the battery backup. So here you can see with no doubt, I can say battery backup is good enough for me personally. And guys, battery backup depends on tons of factor for every individual you'll see a different screen on time. So this was the first screen on time wherein I got 6 hours and 11 minutes. This was without always on display turned on. I'll show you the screen on time with always on display turned on. And this is the screen on time with always on display turned on. Always on display do drains battery. The usage pattern was quite similar. But here I got approximate one hour lesser than the previous one where I used the device without always on display. And with always on display overnight battery drain is approximate 8%. So here you can see when I slept at 12.5 that time battery percentage was 31 and when I woke up at 8.42 so it's after approximate eight and a half hours device did drain 8% of battery. So right now I won't recommend you guys to use the always on display because I feel it is not that optimized when it comes to battery segment. And one major thing which I have noticed and that's layer to the charging speed. So I have also tweeted the same thing on my Twitter. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, make sure to follow me. I keep updating stuff on Twitter too. So initially device used to take 60 minutes to charge, but now nothing phone one with its original charger, it's taking around 80 minutes to fully charge. After even tweeting, there is no response from the officials. And now let's move on to the camera because there were some improvements which nothing have mentioned when it comes to camera segment. Here we have the samples which we clicked after upgrading the device to the latest build. Talking about main versus ultra wide, in this update they mentioned camera and ultra wide camera color consistency is maintained and improved. Yes, we can see in these samples now the color consistency is maintained very well. It's very close to each other. Also, I can see the sharpness of ultra wide camera is also improved very well. But because of this algorithm, all sides of the ultra wide shots have very much noise in the images. Especially in this shot, we can see the top left corner tree have so much of noise in them even in daylight. Talking about main camera, details and dynamic range is still the same. It's very good, but still there is crushing of shadows. We can see in this image, left side near shed where two people have sat down. The shadow in the image is crushed, making dark green leaves looks like pitch black and not exposed well. In human subjects, the skin tones of the subject is very natural and correct. It's a very flat tuning close to natural. In fast paced objects or subjects, the focus and shutter speed is so good, we don't see out of focus or any blurred images. Selfies are good with enough dynamic range and even against the sunlight. As I said, there is very little to improve on selfie camera, it's just decent enough. Overall, according to the pictures, these cameras are more than capable and click usable shots most of the time. Nothing team has been working on camera processing with continuous updates and trying to improve it. However, as I said, the crushing of the shadows and dynamic range should be fixed more.
and now at last let's talk about the performance and gaming part first talking about the cpu throttling so we did run cpu throttling test wherein you can see max cpu only throttled up to 73 percent and you can see the throttling issues in the graph talking about n22 benchmark so here our device are scored 5,76,697 when we talk about gaming so mostly i play battlegrounds mobile india on my oneplus smartphones or any other smartphones i don't play much of other games and when it comes to battlegrounds mobile india nothing phone one does a decent job with 60 fps device do try to deliver 60 fps i don't see much of frame drops while playing battlegrounds mobile india though this device is not meant for gaming but still it does a decent job if you do casual gaming with no doubt device can easily handle 60 fps so guys this was in-depth review of nothing os 1.1.4 if you guys have faced any other issues which i haven't mentioned in the video then do let me know in that in the comment section below or you guys can join a telegram group to update me other bugs in future we'll be coming up with such review videos whenever there is a new update released as of now only this much in this video i hope you guys gonna like the video if you like the video then do give me a thumbs up and if you're new to our channel then do not forget to subscribe the channel thanks for watching have a great day